Okay, for our next exercise, we're going to work on a little bit of photo retouching or image retouching with some common tools built into Photoshop. I've chosen as my sample image off of the Smithsonian Portraits of Scientists and Inventors. There's a link to this directly from our website, although you are certainly not obligated to use these. You may use any photo that you want. These just um, tend to render much more dramatic results, which is why I'm using them to teach. And in particular, I've chosen this photo, and I want to play with the different types of enhancements available to see if I could get a more dramatic type of photo going. So I've already gone ahead and loaded this into Photoshop, and one of the things I'm going to note is that this is sitting in as the background currently. And in general, as a general rule of thumb, I don't want to touch the background because if in fact I have to revert back to the original, I can do that. And if I'm doing many different changes to this, I can change and turn off each different layer individually so I can get the results I desire. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to Layer and I could duplicate the layer right away, or I could actually do a new layer right on top. But I happen to know that what I'm going after is an adjustment layer. And notice that as I do this, it's going to make a new layer for me. So the very first adjustment that I want to make is on the levels. And this is typically a love, um, an adjustment I will make pretty much out of habit. I'm going to call this Levels 1, and that's fine. I could be more specific if I wanted to. But the cool thing about these levels are that over here, what we are seeing is the range of color between 0 and 255. Notice that the heaviest amount of colors is right here in this peak. And then it kind of gradually um, fades out. Notice most of the color is not taking up most of the range. So in truth, you've got a very limited amount of colors happening here. And a lot of that, of course, is theory. So let's get down to practice. Some of the things that are super cool to do here, if I click on this little tiny droplet here, dropper that has the symbol of the white on it, that's indicating that I can set my white point in my photo. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that's going to say, OK, anything that's near the value of what I chose here is going to be interpreted as white or lighter. And you can see that this is starting to happen over here. And conversely, I'm going to choose the black as well. And I'm going to assume that his uh, suit is black for the moment. So already, I can start to see that there is a big change in the way the photo looks. And so I am done with that particular piece. And I can turn on my layers again. Now, if I wanted to do a different type of layer, um, I would once again come up to, actually, let me just show you the difference here. This is the layer that we're working on currently. If I turn that off, I can see the before kind of thing. And here's the after. And quite frankly, for this exercise this week, if, if that's all you do, that would be fine. But feel free to play with some other types of things. You can do another adjustment layer, and this time go for um, a photo filter if you wanted to. And in terms of the photo filter, you can choose to put a different tone on your particular image. But what you do want to do is you want to keep kind of a mental note of the things that you're doing when you're doing this because when you're done with the photo change, changes, you're going to want to note that back in your web page. And I have provided a sample of that. Um, note also that you could play around with um, brightness and contrast. Brightness uh, would allow that to go up a little bit higher. Contrast. Generally, if you're going to run up or down on the brightness, you will want to do the same thing in terms of contrast. But you don't want to go too far because then it just looks weird. Um, so, for example, if we went super bright, 
and fairly low contrast, we would start to um, apply more of an artistic look to the to the image as opposed to really retouching it. Similar to dealing with hue and saturation. And note here that I've done all of these different levels and all of these different layers here. I could play with different types of, of hues. I could play with different types of saturations. Okay. To get back to my layers, I'm going to just double click on my layer option there and I'm going to ah there we go. Bring that up. And if I wanted to take a look at these individually, I could. So once again, I'm looking just at the background, but if I wanted to look at my levels, that's okay. If I wanted to turn on my photo filter, notice my photo filter really doesn't do a lot unless my levels are on as well. But if I wanted to turn that off and turn my brightness contrast on, I could do that. I could turn my hue saturation on. Again, this is truly an art. This is what appeals to you. So however you think your photo looks best at the end of the process is what you want to go for. And that, of course, has a lot to do with what kind of website you're building and what kind of look you want. But go ahead and play around with these things as you would like to. And then once you're done with your particular piece, what you want to do is perhaps if I were to export this image and use it in my website, I would on my website indicate that I've layered in uh, a layer of levels of a photo filter of warm, brightness and contrast, and hue and saturation. So those are the things that have been adjusted in this particular photo. And that's it for this exercise. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.